He's had a strong voice in Detroit sports for decades, but you've heard it booming on the hit radio show Valenti and Foster on 97.1 The Ticket for the last time. Terry Foster retired from the show about three weeks ago following a health crisis, and for the first time he is talking about it with our own Glenda Lewis, and she joins us now with much more. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, he looks different. He sounds different. It was so nice to see him. I sat down with Terry at his home in his living room one on one, and he shared what life is like now that his voice has changed but he wants you to know he still has one. The citrus bowl, so what? No, it's fair. I, it was I, instantly I, obvious to listeners that the passionate Yang to Valenti's Ying on their hit sports talk show on 97.1 The Ticket was not the same. I was in the hospital and it just overcame me. I had an epiphany. It was like, you know what? This stuff is not that deep. And uh, I didn't get angry over things like I used to. Not only has Terry Foster's passion changed, but so has his person. You're also a lighter guy than you Lighter were. guy, I've lost 43 pounds. I lost the weight because I don't want to get sick again. We spoke in his living room, and the now quieter, more introspective, more subdued Terry told me that he knew he was getting tired of the intensity of his live four-hour sports commentating. It was beginning to take its toll on his family, but it took him a while to realize what was really happening to him last August. I type in the basement. I do my blogs and things in the basement. And then my right hand was like, kept making typos and stuff. I said, what's going on here? And I couldn't type. The right hand was gone. I'm like, wow, this is weird. So I thought I had the flu. So like any day, Terry went into the studio. The rest of the day was pretty normal until I tried to go on the air and talk. And then I uh, talked like I'd been drinking. And I was luring and talking like this. And I'm like, man, there's something wrong. So you slept on it? Yeah, went to the doctor and mm -hmm. she said, you had a stroke. And um, she said, I'm gonna call you an ambulance right now. Terry would suffer a second stroke about seven weeks later then to rehab, then a return to the microphone, a changed man. When I first started doing the show, I felt like a stranger, like a new, like a new guy that was just starting this job. And I've been there for 13 years, but I felt like it was my first day. And I think that had a lot to do with me becoming a different person. Here's who he is now. This is Celine playing, tra well, this is her travel soccer team. A proud father of 17-year-old Celine and 15-year-old Brandon and Adrian's husband. And he's now able to be home for family time. I mean, you had a, a great full career, free press, and then you this spark, you know, with Mike. Was it hard to say goodbye? It was hard to say goodbye, but then it wasn't. It was hard to say goodbye because of the fun we had and the fun I wanted to continue having and the show was so popular, that part was hard to, to move away from. But the way that I was feeling after every show, it was a little bit easier because I didn't want to feel this way anymore. Are you friends, you and Mike? Yes, we're gonna have uh, dinner this week. We'll continue to have dinner. And at 58 years old, part of Foster's reflection is on how he plans to write his next chapter. I still have a lot to give. And, I, and also, I can still write, which is good. I got the, got the right hand back, so I can uh, write. So maybe we'll see a new chapter out of uh, Terry Foster. I'm not done yet. You know, here's a guy with 137,000 Twitter followers, Stephen Carolyn, and um, he says he's got that platform. He still wants to use it. He's still open to write and hearing back and forth from people. But when I asked him what he wanted to give to people out of this. What he wanted people to take away from this interview. He told me, you know, I'm not that guy that's gonna preach to go to the doctor. But he said, know your numbers, like know your blood pressure, know your sugar, you know, because he feels like this would have been preventable had he been more aware of what was going on inside of him. So very true. And I'll yeah. be the one to say, go to your doctor, yeah. make sure you go get checked. But that's wonderful. He's showing people that yeah. you can have a stroke, you can survive, yes. and you can keep yeah. on living. And I've seen him at the yeah. gym putting in the time, and he is working really hard at his health. And that's good for him. Yeah, yeah. and he's still out there, and he still wants to be heard. And he's still going to be writing. Yeah. So, all right, thanks, Glenda. Nice story. Construct